Hi guys, I'm Allison. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to be moving through a 60 minute ish practice tonight. Uh, we're going to go nice and slow. So feel free to modify uh, up or down as you see fit. If you have blocks or something that can function as blocks, go ahead and set them at the front of the mat. If you'd like um, a pillow or something to cushion your knees, you can grab that too. A blanket or towel would work as well. And then once you have all of your props in place, go ahead and start laying on your back. And just let your legs do what they want to do. You could lengthen them out, you could bend them. Just let them be passive in a way that feels restful to you. And before we get started with our breathing, I want you to bring your hands together and just start to rub them, start to generate a little bit of heat. I've got the air conditioner cranked up here, so it's actually pretty chilly. So I want to start to warm up the hands a little bit, start to get some friction going. And then take your hands to your temples. Give yourself a little brain massage here. You can get into the forehead, the front of the hairline. You can move the hands around, or the thumbs rather, maybe a little bit back towards the ears. And then take your thumbs and start to, start to walk them down towards your jaw. Let your jaw go slack. Really see if you can get some things to release here in your face. We don't often think about working or relaxing the muscles of the face, but they do a lot of work, particularly our jaw. It can be a really uh, tense area where we hold a lot of a lot of pressure without even realizing it. So we're just kind of getting into the mechanics of, of the face here. And I'm going to take one more little tour back up to the temples. And then let all of this go. Bring your hands down either someplace onto your body or to either side of you. And you can readjust your legs if you'd like. Your eyes close. Start to tune into any sensations that are still lingering in your face. Maybe you feel some kind of residual warmth from your hands. Maybe you're feeling a little looser, a little more release around your jaw area. if you're holding tension between your eyebrows. Notice if your tongue, which is a muscle we often forget, notice if the tongue is somehow still active, see if you can let it and then be passive. And then start to tune into your breathing. Notice what it feels like when the air comes into your nostrils, that inception point. See if you can visualize the air like ribbons kind of entering in through your nostrils and weaving themselves around your head, your skull, all that space that we just made through releasing tension in the face. And then imagine this ribbon of air going back down through the soft palate into your chest, your lungs start to get a little more expansive. And then see if you can get the low belly or diaphragm to just start to fill out too. So that when you inhale, it lifts as you exhale. It falls, there's a tuning back of your belly button towards your spine. Exhale all of your air out. Take 
take a full breath in through your nose, fill all the way up to the crown of your head. Open your mouth and let it out. One more time like that, full deep breath in, all the way from the base of your feet to the crown of your head. Open your mouth, release the air. And third time, full breath in through your nose, fill all the way up, then close your mouth. Pause here for one more little sip of air in through your nose. And then with the mouth closed, exhale out your nose. A few more rounds like this in through the nose, out through the nose. Find a rhythm here that feels right to you. Blink your eyes open. If you have your legs out straight in front of you, bend your knees so that your feet come flat. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. And make sure here that it's not your shin to your knee, it's not your knee to your knee, but actually your ankle to your knee. And then get a little more active in flexing the right foot. So it's almost like you're trying to peel your right toes back towards your shin. And then put even a little more pressure than you have right now between the ankle and the knee. And you're gonna use that pressure to leverage the right knee forward, like you're trying to press it towards the top of the mat. Now this may be a lot of sensation for you already. You may feel a lot going on in the outside of your right hip, if that's the case. Just stay here, let that outer hip soften and open up. If you wanted to take it a little bit deeper, you'll pull the bottom leg, that's the left leg, in towards you so the left foot lifts off of the ground. And then interlace your hands in between this kind of eye of a needle that you have going on here. Keep pulling that right, I'm sorry, that left leg in towards you as you keep driving the right knee forward. And then I like to rock side to side a little bit. It doesn't have to be a big motion at all. And just notice how these tiny movements side to side can make very dramatic changes in how you physically feel this shape. And then keep your legs as they are. If you have the left foot down on the ground, lift it up. And then take your arms out to a T so that they're reaching long in both directions. And then you're going to let this shape in the lower body tip over to the left. So now your right foot is going to land on the floor to the left of your mat. And then if you can, if it's accessible, take hold of your right ankle with your left hand. You may need to scooch the right foot up a little bit closer towards your head and neck. And then if it feels good, kind of rock the right knee forward towards the front of the mat and then let it gently fall back in towards you so that you're making a little more space in the outer right hip as you press the knee forward. And you can take this as slow or as quickly as you'd like. And if it feels good to Keep that right knee suspended forward for a little bit longer. You can play with the tempo. And then release your left hand back down to the ground. Bring your knees back into your chest. Separate the ankle from the knee. And just let yourself kind of circle the knees and hips out. They don't have to go in the same direction. Just feel the low back kind of, uh, sliding around the mat. Feel your thigh bones circling around in the hips. And then we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So you'll start by putting the right foot down onto the ground. Right knee will be pointing straight up towards the ceiling. Left ankle will come to the right knee. Again, make sure it's truly ankle to knee, not shin to knee or knee to knee. And then flex through that left foot. Create even a little more pressure in that ankle to knee connection. And then you can use that pressure to leverage the left knee forwards. 
is that you're making a little more space in the front of the left hip. And then again, stay here if this feels sufficient, if you're enjoying this amount of stretch. Otherwise, you'll pull the right knee in, interlace your hands at the underbelly of your right thigh. Notice if the left knee is kind of folded back and towards you, keep pressing it away. And then same as on the other side, if you rock side to side, you may notice that it will change the sensation in the hip. Depending on how far you rock to one side, how quickly or slowly you rock to one side. Then unwind your arms, take them back out to a T. You're gonna tip this shape over to the right. So this time the left foot lands outside the right long edge of your mat. See if you can find your left ankle with your right hand. Kind of slide that left foot up a little closer to you if you need um, a, little, a little less space. And then same thing here. The leg, the leg, kind of, leg, kind of, so that when you press the knee away from you, you're getting an opening in the outside of the left hip. And then bring both knees back into your chest. Then bring both feet down to the ground so that they're just about in your hips width. All ten toes are going to face forward. Your knees are pointing up towards the ceiling. Bring your hands down to the mat if they're still on your body someplace. Get a little bit wider from the outside edge of your shoulder to the opposite shoulder so that you're kind of widening your collarbone. And then push down into your feet, lift your hips, lift your pelvis. Just taking a gentle glute bridge. You don't have to bring much of a back bend to this at all. I just want us to lengthen out the front of the hips. Back in with your face, see if you're still holding tension. And then slowly lower your hips back down to the ground. If it feels good to let your knees sway side to side, let them sway side to side. And then make your way up into a tabletop. How you get there is up to you. Take your time. Roll into one side, or you can rock yourself up. Come into a tabletop position. See that the hands are right underneath the shoulders. These are right underneath the hips. And then look down at your right hand and you're gonna flip the wrist so either the fingers point straight back towards your right knee or someplace out to the side if pointing the fingers straight back feels a little too aggressive on the wrist. I'm gonna find a, a medium medium intensity kind of positioning here or middle ground. And then just start pulsing forwards and backwards. And then side to side a little bit, particularly if your fingers are pointing out to the side. Play with swaying in the direction that the fingers are pointing and then in the opposite diagonal direction so that you're opening up the back of the right wrist here. And then flip the right fingers forward. You're just going to do the same thing on the left side. To orient the fingers back towards you to whatever degree feels manageable. And then you're going to sway back and forth in the direction that the fingers are pointing. And then along the opposite direction. So if the fingers are straight back towards your knees, just the forwards and back. But if they're out to the side, kind of go side to side here. And then we're going to do the same thing, um, but this time you're going to flip the fingers to the back of the hand is pointing down. And your fingers this time are pointing, everyone's fingers will point straight back towards their knees. And just little rocking forwards and backwards. So now we're getting the top of the wrist and, and into the front of the hand. Again, little muscles that we don't often think about working or stretching, so we don't even always notice that we're holding tension here. You may feel this all the way up your forearm into your elbow. And then switch left side, point the left fingers back towards you. 
then shift forwards and backwards. You may notice one side feels much different than the other. And then flip all of the fingers to face forward so we're in the more traditional, more familiar tabletop. Find a nice, long, neutral spine. So the belly button is moving up towards the spine, but you're not rounding quite yet. The crown of the head is pulling forward. And then push down into the hands with just a little more pressure. So you can start to feel the shoulder blades start to activate here so that they move out towards the armpits slightly. There's a little more engagement. And take a breath in, start to let the belly button sink down as the chest pulls forward so you come into cow. And then exhale, scoop up round into cat, really exaggerate that pressing down through the hands so that the shoulder blades really get puffy. And then again, inhale, come forward, cow. Exhale, round, cat. One more time, inhale, forward cow. Exhale, round for cat. And come back to a neutral spine. Bring the knees a little bit closer together and slide the right foot behind you. Connect all five toes of the right foot to the ground and start to pulse back and forth here. So it's similar to what we did with the wrists, getting into the back of the leg and the ankle, but also getting into the toes. You can start to roll around here a little bit so you actually kind of get into the pinky edges of your feet, get to the inner and the outer ankle. And then when you've had enough, just switch to the left side. Now think of really reaching through your heel as though you could somehow connect your left heel to the floor behind your mat. And come back to tabletop and just tap out the feet a little bit so you get a little release. Let's do the same thing with the hands. You come onto your elbows, just kind of tap out the hands, shake them out. And then once you've got any residual tension out, take a deep full breath in, come into cow, tuck your toes. And then lift your butt up and back, come into a downward facing dog. Your big upside down V. And then let yourself move into this in whatever way feels right to you. So taking whatever kind of micro movements, or maybe, maybe not micro movements, maybe they're much larger, to help you feel settled into this before you get preoccupied with your alignment. Just move in a way that feels intuitive. And you don't have to move the way you always move coming into this. Like take a moment to recognize the ways in which your body would like to move or would not like to move. If stillness feels better to you. And then do start to become a little more still. We're going to work again with the muscles of the calves and the toes. So you're going to pick up your right foot. And this is kind of strange, but stick with me. You're going to kind of use your big toe and your second toe to kind of anchor them around your left ankle, right below the Achilles. So you've got kind of a little, um, little forcep bind. Then you're going to use the right foot to help influence the left heel down and you can kind of pump through the left foot like I'm doing. So you've got just a little more tractioning down. And then switch, put the right foot down, the big toe and the second toe of your left foot will hook to the Achilles of the right foot. And then kind of pump through. You don't worry so much about the alignment or the shape of your down dog here. Again, let this be kind of just an intuitive movement. And then come to a regular normal down dog, keeping whatever kind of bend in the knees that you'd like to really lift the sit bones up and back. And then come forward 
to a plank. Lower down to the mat, you can stay in one piece or you can use your knees. And then once your chest is down to the ground, slide your forearms forward so you come into a space. Hands will be nice and wide. Forearms parallel. Get heavy into the tops of your feet. So rather than tucking the toes, let them be pointed so you can kind of use them like a lever. And then think of really pulling your chest through the upper arms, like you were going to drag yourself forward. And then we're just gonna take small circles here with the head. So start by looking up. And then think of your chin being the um, kind of tip of the pencil here. You're going to make a circle to the right. And the tempo here is up to you, but I'm going to invite you to move slower than perhaps you normally do so that you don't miss any opportunities for releasing things that Step or tight. And then once you complete your second circle, let yourself move in the opposite direction. So once again, think of chin being like a giant paintbrush, and you want to make as full a circle as you can, which might mean that you have to move a little more mindfully, a little more gingerly through some parts of the circle. And then let your gaze come forward. You can let just one ear drop to the side. Come back through center. Drop the opposite ear. And then slide your hands back towards your ribcage. Bring your forehead to the ground. And then bring your hands off of the mat so your fingers will still face forward. The elbows will point straight up into the air. Keep the feet, the tops of the feet heavy. We're gonna take three undulations here. So push into the pads of your fingers. Use your legs, lift up to end the mount. We'll do three so you don't have to do your deepest back bend yet on this first one. And then exhale, slowly stick yourself back down onto the ground. And then inhale, come up. Exhale, slowly lengthen yourself out. One more time, inhale, come up. And then exhale, come back down. Hands will frame your ribcage. Then push yourself up, bring the hips to the heels, come into a child's pose. Widen the knees to any amount. Arms can be out in front of you or reach behind you. And if it feels good, let your forehead massage itself along the mat so you rock your head side to side right along the hairline. And recognize that child pose is an option at any time you want or need a break. And then the next breath or two, come back onto all fours. And then once again, press up and back. Find downward facing dog. And then step the feet together. Take an inhale and reach the right leg long behind you. And then bend your knee, let your hips peel open to the right. Then start to make some circles here with the knee, similar to what we did with the neck. Think of the point of your knee with the um, as kind of the point of a pencil or a paintbrush so that the size of the circle here is up to you, as is the tempo. Just notice maybe where you're rushing the circle, where you're kind of um, cutting corners, even though a circle doesn't have corners. And then lengthen the right leg out on the next upswing. Step the right foot in between your hands. Come into a low runner's lunge. If you'd like blocks here, it's a nice option to give you just a little more lift. Take an inhale, pull the chest forward. 
And then just let the back knee tap down. Maybe you get a little more height in the chest. You can lift your fingertips up and away from the blocks or the mat. Do you feel steady? And then bring the hands back down. Bring the back knee up and start to lengthen through the front leg to any amount. You don't have to straighten it. You could, but find a little more length here. Keep that chest pulling forward. And then see if you can pull this right hip backwards in space. So imagine that you had someone with their fingers right in your hip crease here. And they're kind of moving it towards the back of the room. You'll get a little more square. You'll start to feel things probably open up or talk to you here in the outer line of the right leg. And then re-bend the left knee, sorry, the right knee, but do let the left knee tap back down, take a breath and lift your chest. And then exhale, lengthen through the front leg, think of wrapping the right outer hip backwards. One more time, come forward, tap the back knee down, lift your chest. And then lengthen through the front leg. This time we'll stay a little bit. And this time I want you to very deliberately stick your right hip out to the right. You'll start to feel things stretch maybe a little more on the inner groin, behind the right knee. Let this feel good. And then condense it back in. Come back to that more square hip alignment here. So it's almost like you're rolling the outer hip underneath you. You may need a little bend in the knee to really help square things off. And then we're going to take the left hand. You're going to cross it over your right shin or your foot. You have blocks here again this is a good place to use them because you can get a little more height and you're going to walk the hands to any amount towards the middle edge of the mat and in doing so think of pulling the right hip now towards the left side of the mat so it's like you're scissoring your inner thighs towards one another kind of the inverse of what we were just doing you may even kind of turn to the edge of your left foot. Take one more breath in here. And then slowly, carefully crawl yourself back to a low runner's lunge. Let's take a simple twist, reach the right arm up. And start to circle the arm out here. I'm not going to micromanage this arm movement. Just let it feel good again. Experiment with the size of your circles. It doesn't have to be the cleanest circle here. If you want to reach back, get into the space underneath your armpit. Start to lower your right hand back down to the ground. And step back to a downward facing dog. Take an inhale, come forward to your plank. Lower yourself down to the mat. Once again, bring your hands wider than the mat. Fingertips will come forward. Just like before, inhale, lift yourself up, press into the tops of the feet. And then pause here for a moment. You're going to lower yourself back down, but we're going to get a little bit jazzy with the shoulders. So as you start to descend, Think of wrapping the front of your right shoulder down and towards your midline. And then the left shoulder. And you can kind of shimmy yourself down so you're getting into the front, front of your chest and arm here. Perfect. We'll meet the mat. Let's do this one more time. Feel yourself up. And then this time start with the left shoulder. Turn it down. And then the right. And then the left until you're totally flat. Then hands will frame your ribcage. Press yourself back up through all fours into downward facing dog. We'll start the same mini sequence on the left side. So float the left leg up. And then bend the left knee, peel open, point that left knee towards the ceiling. Then 
And then utilizing your left knee like the point of a pencil, start to make some circles here. Making sure to get both directions. Taking them as slow or as quickly as feels right to you. I usually advocate for doing things slow, but if it feels a little bit better to build some heat, go ahead. And then on the next upswing, lengthen that left leg out. Pull the left foot forward, come into your low runner's lunge. Chest lifts, back knee's going to drop. Let the front of the shoulders roll back a little bit. Maybe you lift the fingertips off of the ground. Take a breath in. And then with the breath out, start to lengthen through both legs. Thinking of wrapping the left hip backwards, the left outer hip backwards. And slowly rebend the knees, right knee will lightly touch the ground, chest lifts for a breath in. Breath out, lengthen the front leg. One more time, come forward, bend the knee, breathe in. And then lengthen, breathe out. Pause here again, block is going to be helpful. A little more stability and lift. And now this time you're going to very deliberately bump that left hip out to the left, keeping the front foot where it is. You're just changing the pelvis here. So you may start to feel things open up a little more into the inside of the left groin. And then we'll do the opposite, really pull the left outer hip backward. So you're kind of condensing that outer left hip in. And then the right hand will cross over the left foot and shin. Think of hugging that left outer hip kind of towards the right side of the mat, towards the opposite side of the mat. You can kind of lean your hips to the right. Looking at bring the inner thighs closer to one another. Now you may start to feel things a little more on the outside of your front leg. Then come forward once again to a low runner's lunge. Reach the left arm up. And then make whatever kind of circular motion or oval motion with the arm leaning backwards maybe opening up across the chest. And then bring the left hand down. Step back to a downward facing dog. And start to walk the hands backwards. Take a nice slow walk to a forward fold at the back of the mat. Keeping the knees soft, let the head go. Let yourself bounce a little bit if that feels good. You could sway side to side. Notice if you are keeping tension in your neck, if you're still trying to kind of gaze forward ahead of you. Imagine you're almost trying to look into your belly button so that you can really let the back of the neck release. And then take an inhale, come up onto your fingertips, keep the knees soft. Think of pulling your chest forward, so now the gaze is slightly forward, but the back of the neck is still easy. And then exhale, round forward over your legs. Crown of the head kind of aims down to the space in between your big toes. One more time, inhale, fingertips, chest pulls forward as the spine lengthens. And then keep your spine long, you're just simply going to crawl yourself back to a plank. Pause in your plank. Notice what your hands are doing. See if you can deliberately spread the fingers. Notice what your legs are doing. Can you get a little more active, a little more buoyant in the lower body? And then start to creep your toes forward towards your wrists. So now you'll come to a forward fold towards the top of the mat. No rush to get there. Can always walk your hands backwards to meet yourself a little more in the middle. And keep your chin tucked to your chest. 
If your feet are wider than inner hips width, just scoot them in a little bit. Take an inhale, come up onto your fingers. So keep all 10 toes facing straight forward. But start to walk your fingers far to the right. So they're going to come outside of your right foot and point to the right. Then bend the left knee as much as you can. And think of leaning your hips to the left. And then come back through center. Find equal length in both legs for just a moment here. And then curl all 10 fingers to the outside of your left foot. So they're pointing out beyond the left long edge of the mat. Bend your right knee to any amount that allows you to lengthen through the left leg a little more. And then think of leaning your hips, kind of bumping them out to the right. back to your center. Once again, let your head release. Let your chin really glue itself to your chest. Challenge yourself to keep it glued there as you slowly start to roll up. So you want to start with a really nice, generous bend in the knees. Fingertips will start to lift up and away from the ground. But this is a really gradual, steady build. And then be soft, keeping that chin tucked into your chest. And then when it absolutely has to, you'll peel, peel it off the chest, gaze straight forward. Take an inhale, reach both of your arms up. Interlace your fingers. Point them straight up into the air and take a nice generous side bend. To the left. I'm going to do this on my knees just because I want you to be able to see and I'll face you. Think of moving your arms backwards in space, leaning back a little bit, and then come through center. Take an inhale, lift your fingers up, and then this time side bend to the right. Maybe you kind of gaze up and past your uh, left armpit. And come through center. Release your hands down to your sides. Take an inhale, reach all the way up. And then as you exhale, flip forward over your legs, keeping the knees nice and soft. Take an inhale, long spine. Exhale, step back to a plank. Either pause in your plank for a moment and lift up and back to a downward facing dog, or lower yourself down to the mat. Take an inhale, come into a back bend if you've lowered down, small cobra or a big one. And then exhale, lift yourself up and back, downward facing dog. With your next inhale, bend your knees, look forward, and then take two big steps forward. Set the feet in between the hands. Inhale, find a long spine. Exhale, release, let this all go. Inhale, reach your arms up, look up, stand up. And then one more time, same thing, fold forward over the legs. Fingertips will come to the ground. Take an inhale, find a long spine. And then it's plank to down dog or plank to the ground. Once you reach the ground, if you reach the ground, inhale, pull forward for a back bend. And then exhale, lift up and back, downward facing dog. Couple rounds of breath here. And again, play with Maybe keeping a softness in your knee. Think of really lifting your sit bones up and back. And even with the knees bent, you can still think of reaching the heels down to the ground without jamming the legs open. And with your next breath in, bend your knees, look forward. Step or walk your feet in between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, reach your arms up, look up. And then exhale, hands to your sides. Then step the feet a little bit closer together if they're wider than hip width. Then take an inhale, come into chair pose. So you'll sink the hips back as you reach the arms forward, chest still stays lifted. Transfer a little more weight into the heels. And then as you exhale, fold forward. Take an inhale, find a long spine. And then exhale, take a big step back with the left foot. We're gonna do our Surya Namaskar be a little bit differently today. So you're in your low runner's lunge, you've been here before, familiar shape. Heel toe the right foot a little farther to the right. So now your right pinky toe comes a little bit closer to your right thumb. And then hop the left foot slightly to the left. Now turn your left toes out slightly, not so they're straight to the side, almost like you're trying to point towards the upper left of the mat. Again, a good place to use blocks it really helps you kind of anchor down. So the front knee is bent, right knee stacked right over the right ankle. And now keeping this right knee as it is, think of pressing the outside of your left foot, that kind of knife edge down into the mat. And then get even a little more steady in your footing. Press down to lift up, coming to a warrior one. If you feel that the feet are pretty tight here still, you can heel toe the right foot further to the right. Bring the left foot maybe a little further to the left. And then take your hands to your hips. Think of the work we did to square the hips in that lunge. I want you to think of wrapping the right hip back, letting the left hip rotate forward slightly. Draw your ribs and tailbone down. And then reach the arms back up. Make one more breath in. And then with the breath out, bring the hands back down. Step back to downward facing dog. And then take an inhale, reach the right leg up. Pull the right knee in towards your nose as though you're going to step it forward, but you don't. And then listen here, a little tricky. You're gonna hook your right ankle to your left knee, lift your hips up and back, Take a figure four position in your down dog. And you can bend the left knee to any amount. I like to take a really generous bend in the knee here. Square off the hips and find that same stretch in the right outer hip. One more breath in. And then step that right foot in between your hands. So you're back in a low runner's lunge. And then turn the left heel down. This time the toes will point three out to the left. Push down to come up to a warrior two. Right knee is still tracking right over the right ankle. Pull your ribs in. Get a little longer from front, middle finger to back, middle finger. And flip the front palm. Inhale to reach up and back for a reverse warrior. And then bring your right forearm to your right thigh. Sweep the left arm forward and then let it open your rib cage as you rotate up. Rotate that left lung up towards the ceiling. Neck is nice and easy. Notice if tension has crept back into your face. Take one more breath in here. And then with the breath out, bring your hands to your hips, lengthen the front leg. Pick up your right toes and pivot them to the left. So now you're facing the left edge of your mat. Take an inhale, lift your chest, let the hips come a little more directly underneath you. And then exhale, hinge forward. Hands will come down underneath your shoulders. Let the head go, let the neck be easy. Take an inhale, find a long spine. And then exhale, fold. Now, if it feels good to just hang here and let gravity do its thing, you'll stay where you are. Or you can let yourself start to sway side to side. 
Again, letting the, the tempo be dictated by your breath. Doesn't have to be like a metronome. You don't have to stay uh, syncopated, more intuitive, not particularly regulated. And then in the next breath or two, start to crawl your way back to a low runner's lunge, right to a spacing forward. And one more time, we'll take a twist, reach the right arm up. And then bend your elbow, bring your hand to the back of your head. And then think of reaching your right elbow back, leaning the back of your head into your hand so that this becomes just a really nice opening shape across the upper body. And then bring that right hand back down. Come up onto your fingertips, lift the chest. And then step the left foot forward to meet the right. Hold forward over your leg. Take an inhale, long spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, come to stand. We'll do the same thing on the left side. Inhale for a chair pose, arms sweep up, hips sink back, ribs pull in, chest is forward. Shift a little more weight into your heels, get a little bit lower. And then exhale to fold forward, release. Take an inhale, long spine. Exhale, slide that right leg long behind you to land in a low runner's lunge. Start to scoot your left foot left. Inch your left pinky finger closer to the left thumb. And then hop the right foot slightly right. So now the toes are angling up towards the front of the mat. You're going to press into the outer knife edge of your foot. You'll notice that that kind of rolls the arch of the foot up. So now you have a little more structure built into your foot. Push down to lift your arms up, lift your torso up. Kind of sucks out if maybe you need a little more space from front heel to back heel. And then bring your hands to your hips. Use the left hand to influence the left hip back, right hip forward a little bit. So it's like you're steering a steering wheel. And then reach the arms back up. Hold for a breath in. And then breath out, circle the arms down, spin the right heel up. And then step back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in and lift the left leg up. Pull your left knee in towards your nose. The shoulders will shift forward. And then here's kind of our strange moment here. You're going to lift the hips up and back as you come into a figure four in your down dog. So I know this is not the um, one of those classic uh, sequence to do in a beginner class, but you know this shape from being on your back. And bend the right knee as much as you need to, again, to access that lengthening, that opening in the outside of the left hip. And then step that left foot forward. Spin the right heel down, now your right toes point straight out to the right. Push down once again to lift up Warrior two, arms are long. Left knee tracking right over the left ankle. Keep pressing into the outside edge of your right foot without looking behind you at the hand that's reaching behind you. Can you get a little longer, a little more active? And then flip your front hand. Take a big breath and to lift up and back for a reverse warrior. And then left forearm comes to left thigh. Sweep this right arm forward. As it comes forward, let it rotate your ribcage up towards the ceiling. Let the neck be easy. Sharpen the line of that back leg by staying engaged. The knife edge of the foot against the mat. One more breath in. 
And then come up to stand, lengthen the legs, pivot your left toes to the right, hands to hips. Lift your chest. And then exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward, hands underneath your shoulders. Take an inhale, plate yourself halfway as you lengthen the chest forward. And then exhale, slowly melt back down. And we'll do the same thing as we did on the other side. You can stay here. This time you might choose to reach your arms behind you as though you're trying to pull yourself through your legs. Or you can keep the hands anchored down. Let yourself sway side to side. Play with kind of bumping the hips out like you did in a lunge so that you can access both the inner hip and the outer hip. Let the knees be soft and fall inwards if that feels good. And then in the next breath or two, start to crawl yourself back to a low lunge so the left toes point forward. Anchor the right hand down, peel the left arm up. And then bend the elbow from the left hand behind your head. And then just let yourself lean back. You can let the legs become a little softer, opening up across the chest. You can release the hand from the head if you'd like. And then circle the left hand back down. And then this time, let's step back to a plank. And lower yourself down, knees or no knees. And then flip over onto your backs. We're going to play with this figure four shape in our bridge poses. If you don't want to do any back bends, you could find a restorative rest by just letting the knees knock together, the feet as wide as the mat. Or if you have a block, you could find a block under your sacrum. But we're going to start with both feet flat in the bridge and then move into our figure four. So first one is just going to be playing hands down, chest open. Press down through your feet, lift your hips, lift your pelvis. Drawing energy up through your feet, through the calves, hamstrings, into the glutes. And then slowly up the spine, make its way back down to the mat. You can let the knees white side to side. And then inch the feet a little bit closer together, just so you have a little, um, a little less width, the more of a narrow base. Lift the hips up again. Press into the backs of the arms for a little support. And then you're going to pick the right foot off of the ground. You may stop here. This may be enough of a challenge. You could proceed by hooking the right ankle over the left knee, continuing to drive down through the left foot. Lift the hips. Notice if the right knee wants to droop, try to keep it from doing so. And then on one foot, on this left leg, lower the hips down. And then let yourself sway side to side in this figure four. And then roll into the meaty part of your right hip to get a little massage. And then let's switch. Put the right foot back down. We'll start lifting up on two feet. Go ahead, press into the heels, lift the hips. Pause. And then see how little movement happens as you lift the left foot up. Pausing here or crossing the left ankle over the right knee. Driving down through that right foot, keeping the left hip from drooping. Pause for one more breath in. And then slowly lower down. Pause here for a moment in this figure four. And then same thing, let yourself rock side to side a little bit. And then from here, just bring yourself up to a seated position, whichever way you end up facing is fine. And you're going to cross your legs as best you can. See if you can get the right shin forward of the left. 
If that's not working, you can let the ankles cross. Let's see if you can get um, get the feet to kind of um, like fire logs, so they're stacked right next to one another. If you have a block or blanket here, it can be nice to sit up on something, especially if you're tighter in the low back or the legs, so that you can really sit up and out of your pelvis. And then you're gonna lift your chest and start to pull this lifted chest forward. You'll walk your hands forward to any amount. Maybe you come down onto your forearms. I like to pause here, get situated, let the outer hips release a little bit. Let the head drop. And then maybe you find that the tissue relaxes enough to allow you to Lengthen the arms forward a little bit more. Again, if you had a block or a pillow, you could bring it underneath your head as a little perch, a little bit of support. You start to crawl your way back up. Bring your left hand to the outside of the right knee. We're going to take a very easy little twist here. The right hand will come behind you. And take a gentle little counter twist. And then just switch out the legs and the left shin falls forward of the right. And situate your hands so that you can use them to lift yourself a little taller. And then your tall chest pulls forward before, before any rounding happens. There's a forward action. Resting on your forearms, staying perched on your fingertips. And then let the head go. So now there is a deliberate rounding of the cervical spine. And then to whatever degree feels right, you can start to lengthen your upper body forward a little bit so that you're a little more drapey. Pull yourself back upright. Gentle little twist. Lengthen the spine, cross the right hand to the left knee. Left hand anchors behind you. Stay lifted, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper, draw your navel back towards your spine. And then counter twist. And then bring your legs out in front of you. Come down onto your back. And let's take a happy baby, draw the knees into the chest. Start to reach the feet up towards the ceiling. You can grab through the outer edges of your feet, or better yet, find something a little bit um, closer to your knee, a uh, grip closer to your knee so that you can pull those knees towards your armpits without getting too crunchy in the hips or rolling the lower back too far off of the ground. there any other calming postures that you'd like to take before we settle into Shavasana? Go ahead. Make sure it's nothing that's going to elevate your heart rate. And then once you're ready, start to find a version of Shavasana that feels restful. The classical version. You'll let your feet come just about as wide as the mat so the toes can flop open and the hips start to rotate open. And you'll let the hands come out to your sides, keeping just a little bit of space between your upper arm and your rib cage. Again, if this doesn't do it for you, if there's another version that allows you to relax and stay present, please take that version. Wherever you are, check in with your face. Check in with 
your jaw, check in with your teeth. Do you notice the sensation of your breath, of the air in your nostrils as the breath moves away from its deliberate controlled state to a more passive one? small movement back into your body. Let your head move side to side. And eventually, make your way up to a tall seat. Letting my hands rest wherever they land. And a nice tall spine. Without letting your head drop completely, just let the chin move towards your throat, not the, not the chest, but the throat, so you find a little more space in the back of your skull, a little more space between the base of your ears, the crown of the head, and that air can move around top of your body with a little more ease. Take a moment, see how you feel. Bring your hands together. Close the final breath in. And the breath out. Namaste. Thanks guys. For a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. If you have any questions, please reach out to us and hope to see you back here same time next week or on Saturday.